Hi guys, so let's now finish off the macro side of uh, the paper two potential uh, essay questions pre-U economics. Uh, now I've got 10 highlighted here. I just want to say at the start here, yes, this looks like a huge amount, but actually if you plan for these essays in twos or threes at least, then uh, teach back that uh, essay plan to uh, your buddies there then you'll actually make quite light work of this and then those people that have been taught a particular uh, essay plan for a particular theme here, go and teach that to someone else and so on. Uh, and then you'll really make sure that you're ready whatever, uh, whatever essays do actually come up. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've highlighted here. Uh, number one, uh, the government cannot simultaneously achieve low inflation and low unemployment. So a real plug to uh, the Phillips curve. Uh, of course, there's uh, videos uh, on that content for you to go through. Uh, a lot of kind of theoretical principles that you'd be able to use. An essay on that. Uh, it hasn't been in the... Uh, the macro uh, side of the questions for a little while, so possibly that could come up. We could have something more up to date regarding uh, the uh, government's fiscal policy. So pledges to eradicate the budget deficit in 2010 illustrate the failure of fiscal austerity. Um, evaluate this statement, that sort of thing, that could come up. Okay. Um, so check that out. Right, number three, the fact that uh, more economically developed countries commonly utilise floating exchange rates illustrates their superiority over fixed exchange rate regimes. Uh, so this principle could come up as well. And really this is asking you this sort of question to compare the way in which uh, LEDCs will use fixed exchange rate regimes against how MEDCs will most commonly use uh, floating regimes or dirty floating regimes anyway. Uh, okay, now, number four, 200 years later, comparative advantage is still the main driving force in international trade. Um, okay, so, of course, David Ricardo's theory there <laughs> has, uh, has obviously uh, now reached 200 years of age, uh, just over 200 years of age now. Uh, and so how relevant is it in today's world? Of course, the world we live in today is vastly different from that of David Ricardo. Uh, so uh, yeah, th this is an interesting essay title as well. Uh, okay, right, globalization has benefited MEDCs and LE LEDCs alike. So don't think just because we've seen globalization already that it might not pop up again. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, you know, the, the examiner can throw a bit of a double bluff there. All right, so just be aware of that. More likely, it will be uh, involved in another or integrated in another theme. So, for instance, I've included it here. Number six, globalization means that comparative advantage is no longer relevant. Evaluate this statement. Okay, so uh, really it's very very similar this question to the one we looked at there in number four Okay, but just integrates that term globalization within number four you'd want to include globalization anyway uh, Okay, so HDI should be the primary means of determining economic progress uh, well Possibly in LEDCs, but MEDCs more commonly will focus on GDP growth, of course, and that is their primary economic target in most circumstances. Okay, uh, but it's uh, it's been a little while since we've seen anything on those uh, indicators. There, expansionary monetary policy has prevented an economic de uh, depression. Uh, okay, right. So, really questioning the relevance and. Uh, the uh, importance of this expansionary monetary policy that we've had in place for such a long period of time really does concern me that I think it's storing up a lot of trouble for the future uh, because people are actually uh, encouraged to actually borrow more because interest rates are just so low. And when you factor in inflation, you've actually got negative real interest rates. Uh, and that is good news for people that actually have a lot of borrowing. So why not borrow more at these times? And yes, that borrowing is cheap at the moment, but if interest rates rise, what sort of scenario could play through? Uh, okay, and then there's all sorts of other issues that you'd be able to consider in relation to that money monetary policy argument. Uh, okay, number nine, inflation continues to be the primary objective of the Monetary Policy Committee. Well, 
Is it? Uh, is it? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one. But just having a look at uh, that target 2.0 and the Bank of England and their targeting, uh, it's again been a little while since we've seen anything on that. So it's worth having a look over that. And then finally, the pound's depreciation. Um, will inevitably cause an improvement in the current account position for the UK economy. To what extent uh, is this statement correct? Something like that once again. Okay, so lots of interesting themes, but guys, please, as I said, don't try and do this all yourself. Uh, just plan out some essays with your friends, all right? And then teach each other and teach someone else and make sure that you've had a go at teaching each of these through so you are absolutely ready to fire on all cylinders come Thursday. Thanks, guys. Best of luck to you.